The performance of the company will be analyzed taking into account the economic and financial means, the change in the operations and the results obtained. The productivity, profitability and return analysis will consist of comparing those different factors with each other. Profitability is the income to sales ratio. Productivity is the sales to assets ratio. Return is the income to assets ratio. The highest return with the lowest risk level should be the target for any performance management and effective financial policy and management. So computing these ratios is meaningful. This module is made of two chapters. In the first one, we will study the notions of profitability, productivity and return, return on capital employed and return on equity. Whereas the second chapter will focus on the leverage effect. At the end of this module, a summary will be presented to you, as well as many quiz to let you test your knowledge. The goal of this module is to know how to interpret those different ratios. Productivity is obtained taking into account the sales level achieved given the capital employed, i.e. the assets used to run the business. Asset turnover ratio is a result of sales divided by the capital employed. Assets or capital employed are the sum of non-current assets plus WCR. Return, i.e. return on capital employed, ROCE, then reflects the ability of the firm to deliver a certain level of return when using the capital employed, that is to say, all the economic means available to run the business. Those assets are funded by financial resources provided by shareholders and banks. ROCE is a result of the operating margin multiplied by the asset turnover ratio. In other words, by simplification, ROCE is the recurring operating income divided by the capital employed. In order to test your knowledge upon the performance management, key indicator ratios, I invite you to a little quiz, shall we? You have to say if the following statement is right or wrong. The leverage effect is only favorable to the shareholders when the ROCE is superior to the cost of debt. Well done, you found the right answer. The leverage effect is favorable to the shareholders return on equity when ROS is higher than I, the pre-tax cost of debt. In other words, the company should achieve a higher operating income than the net finance cost in order to take advantage of the leverage effect and deliver a higher return on equity. According to you, which of these two companies can benefit from a positive leverage effect? Let's compare for these two companies the cost of borrowing and the ROS. The cost of borrowing of the A company is equal to financial expenses divided by financial liabilities which is 6 divided by 50, equals 12%. The ROS is equal to operational result divided by economic assets, which is 10 divided by 100, equals 10%. The ROS being inferior to the cost of borrowing, the A company won't be able to provide a positive leverage effect to its shareholders, but on the contrary, a hit of the club. The B company has a cost of borrowing of 2 divided by 40, which is 5%, which is inferior to its ROS of 8 divided by 100, which is 8%. Therefore, it will be able to benefit from a positive leverage effect.